we're going to do <coughs> damper system again, um, revisit. I, there is a video up on YouTube from my last class um, that you guys can um, reference for a little bit more details than what we'll get in today. Um, what I didn't focus on in that was this universal damper motor style. So you guys all have one, let's pull it out and we'll just start with that. The Belimo damper motor. When do you need to use this versus the popular Honeywell? Larger shaft. That's exactly right. Hmm. So, um, can you guys see that? Um, if you look at the top of the, the damper, this is the shaft sticking out. The Honeywells are much smaller. Let me show you the Honeywell on the bottom. See the size? Yep. The bottom. Mm -hmm. Yep. And uh, they also only stick up just a short ways here. Whereas this one comes up higher and you can actually tighten down onto it with this motor. Mm -hmm. You can't install this on a Honeywell damper. So, um, in the, some situations, the Honeywell spring um, open is defective or it's got too much resistance, high static issue and uh, we end up needing to replace it with a power open, power close because the spring's not strong enough to overcome once it closes. It just stays closed because of the high static. The spring's not strong enough to overcome. Hmm. Um, in those situations, we can't just replace the motors. We have to also replace the damper it's sitting on with the style that will hook onto a power open, power close damper. Who here has installed the bulimic damper motor? Great. Perfect. All right. I had no clue what I was Yeah, what did it feel like? Uh, make it up as you go along. Okay. The little, I don't like the little, the little foot thing was kind of loose, but and it kind of wiggled on the, on the thingy. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I, I feel like I made it go. I mean, the power open, yeah, you can see right. a power open and power close. I wasn't quite sure how to set things. Yeah. It works. Okay, <laughs> working is what matters. All right, so here's the brace. You see the brace on here? That holds the back of your motor in place. Whereas if that's not on there and your motor turns, um, what will happen? The motor itself is going. Yeah, when it comes on, I, I did give you a hint in what I said, didn't I? <laughs> the motor turns, which we don't want the motor to turn. So um, that brace is crucial. It comes in your box. It's easy to fall, have it fall out in the attic and not realize that it's there if you've never done these before. Um, but it is very crucial. There you go. That's how slow they turn, by the way. That preserves the, uh, the motor long term. If it's not supported, the motor turns instead of the shaft. Mm -hmm. We need the shaft to turn. Okay, so what I'm twisting up top, does everyone see that little black circle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any ideas what that is? Uh, how much you want it to turn? Like yep. That's exactly right, the direction you want it to turn. So, a lot of times, if you notice the labeling on the um, low voltage wires, we have open, close, common. I got is that power, power. It's like ground we don't have open, close, common. And it's not any more helpful in the instruction. Okay? We have common, which is the one, look on the gray, on your gray. Common is the one that's different than the other two. Yeah. And then the other two uh, will rotate the motor one direction or the other. So you can hook it up and you think you got it right, but you notice it's spinning the opposite of what you want. And instead of changing the wires, you just twist your little knob here and it'll change the direction. Very handy. And 
at the end of all this, you actually will find that the um, these universal dampers are really nice to work with once you learn them and very handy to use. Okay, the other uh, difference in this setup is the damper inside of here. You notice how um, this one is closed. Honeywell is closed. Mm -hmm. It closes completely flat, 180. Mm -hmm. Whereas the uh, other style dampers close at a 45. Either direction. Why is it important to know that they close in either direction? You have to set it up open as opposed to set it up closed. Okay. I'm actually um, getting it to open because I turned it backwards, didn't I? But you can see what's going on here. Are you wearing backwards? Oh yeah, I just twisted the top. <laughs> that fast enough for anybody? Mm -hmm. All right, so a little black knob on the top, not the circle, but the little black knob. If you push it down, you're able to turn your damper manually. So this allows you to kind of figure out what's going on, where you set your damper. You can't turn that top of that damper motor without disengaging it. So you push this black knob down and you can disengage it. You guys see that? Okay. So if, um, if you just take it like it is right here, and we have our little stoppers for where we can limit the damper open and close, if we just take it, hook it up, and turn it on to one of these 45 angled open close, every time it runs, it'll just keep going until it stops, hits the end, and closes. And then when it opens, it'll go the same way, it'll go past the open point until it stops and closes. So you have to set where it needs to stop for open. So you can see on the top of mine, see how I've adjusted the screw on the one side? So when the damper turns, you'll hit that screw and stop straight on the open. Mm -hmm. Like that. Okay? So when you're doing one of these motors, it's crucial to know where your damper is. The newer ones have an arrow on top of here to actually show you the direction of your damper. Super convenient. The older ones don't have any of that. So you have to actually open one side and look at it when you're doing the setup on a new motor. So you're opening one side and looking at it. You can also, um, knowing that they spin uh, 45 degrees close, open, close, you can also um, by hand, feel where it's hitting, and you know that's your stopping point, then set it up, you know, go from there all the way to the other step stopping point, and you got both marks in. Set it up to where uh, if you can't open it up, or it's going to be a nightmare to open it up, mark where both of the closing points are, and then the center of that is your open point. Right? So that makes sense. You set the, and you set the screw when it's open, so that way if it, when it closes, it'll... Go yeah. Close and find the resistance to stop. And yeah. When it opens, it'll stop there. Yeah. So what you do is you, you're holding this down and you're twisting this. Let me loosen this up so I can demonstrate it. So we have it all the way. What am I hitting? The. Uh, oh, okay, it's just the way I have it tightened on here. Also, your 11 and one fits these screws. Make your life way easier. Take an 11 and one up there. You don't have to use a wrench, which is quite awkward. Right? Okay. So if we are uh, turning it to find out where both of the ends are, then we can mark um, each side on here and then find the middle. And then once you know where your middle is, you can adjust your set screw over to where it hits and stops at open, swings and hits the side, stop at close. The other thing to note on these motors 
is that when you're opening up and, and replacing a motor, it's often easy to leave a lot of metal exposed. At the end of your project, you've torn stuff apart. Um, you want to try to get insulation, even if you have to find some. I've sometimes taken attic insulation and, and tucked it around and taped it down, but you want to cover your bare metal spots as much as possible so you don't have condensation after your project. And then um, getting a visual of actually being able to see it turn open and close is the best way. So until you get good at it, please take off the side and watch and make sure that you install this right. It's not just close all the way through open and then close again. Okay, um, if you have a motor that you're replacing in the attic like this and you want to um, test it, you don't have a second person on the job, set yourself up by turning the zone you're not using off and the zone you're working on. That way, when you get up there, uh, the other way around, the zone you're not working on off, on, Try this again, guys. <laughs> Let me start with uh, why this matters. If you have both thermostats calling, then both of your dampers will be open, right? Right. They're not going to receive 24 volts to close, right? So you go up in the attic, you replace your motor, but you don't get to see it close. So if you set yourself up to where the motor you're working on is powered to close, so you have the other zone on and the one that you're working on off. And then when you get up there, you install your motor. You can set it to the off point, hook it up, make sure the power is pushing it closed. And then you can uh, either reverse the power on your wires to get it to swing open and watch it swing open. Or twist this if you already have that orientation backwards and it tries to open when you know it should be closed. So it's just a trick to save yourself uh, walking up and down while you have the damper open and trying to figure that out. Um, one trip to the attic is always the best way to go. Take everything you need in the bag with you. And then um, testing dampers in general, the best place to, the best way to test dampers, Jessica, what is the, the best way to test if your dampers are opening and closing? Like this at the vent. That's exactly right. <laughs> The best way to test your dampers is from the house. Turn the thermostat on, go up there and feel the air come on, turn the thermostat off while the other zone's running, and feel the airflow stop. And so many times we get overwhelmed with the damper system and our diagnostic process, and we're up there opening and cutting things in because we're trying to understand it, when we could have solved the problem or realized we didn't have a problem just by uh, really simple inside the home fresh AC testing, uh, changing a thermostat, checking airflow by hand. What if the temptation to get in the attic is really strong, and if you really want to get in the attic, yeah, should it, you still just stay down and still just test? No, the I would give in. I would give in. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's a very relatable feeling. If you really want to get in the attic, go for it. I'm being a smart aleck because I in my last on call, I was like, yeah, but and Bert, I argued with Bert. He's like, just, just get on a ladder and see. And I was like, yeah, but, <laughs> Ugh. and like jumped up in the attic, and then like came back like, ah, it seems like, it, and then it was there. Yeah. So legit, like, save yourself the trip and just. Right, right. A lot of times with damper systems, you're getting up in the attic because when you don't need to, but because you have this feeling like you don't understand and you want to see everything, mm -hmm. but it's all concealed inside of ductwork. So you can watch your motor up here turn, and it could not be moving the shaft underneath at all. Right. So um, you still need to either cut it open or go downstairs and, and feel it, we have it operating. And that also lets you move around the house quickly and understand each of your zones, which thermostat controls what area, that sort of thing. Um, one of the most helpful tips I ever got in diagnostic is start with the most simple steps possible um, and start with what you already understand. So 
if you get onto a job and you got a problem and there's a certain area that's kind of a, a gray unknown area for you on that system, it, the new guy, a tendency is to kind of feel like our problem is the area I don't understand. My problem is the board because I can't really figure out how the board should work. Um, and then burn a lot of time trying to figure that out instead of just walking up and checking the filter. Maybe the issue was the filter was so slammed that that's why the unit froze. All right, so it's always show up. Is the thermostat running? Filter. What can we test with our hands? That sort of thing. But the same thing go is true of our damper system. Okay, a number one reason I get called on a damper system. All right, next week we're going to revisit the damper system. Uh, we just had time for the one motor, which has been a pretty common uh, call. Um, again, you can, before you climb up in the attic, open that motor up and use it a little bit, get a feel for how it's going to lock onto your shaft, where, how to adjust the ends, what tools you'll need once you get up there. Um, before you climb up in the attic, get familiar with that. Um, and then, yeah, once you use it, like you said, you're kind of just figuring it out as you go. Once you use it, you realize this is actually pretty straightforward. Um, very doable. And then the other note on that is you have two different damper styles. The shafts are different. The how far they swing is different. So know which one you're working with. One's a Honeywell specific. The other one we can use the universal motors on. So, cool. We will visit the education of the damper system, technical stuff next week. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast, available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications, available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.